everybody and a warm welcome to my channel Tarot by Isabella. I hope you're all doing fine and I'm very happy to see you here. Today's video will be a little bit different from my other videos. In today's video I'm gonna talk about readings and how I do a reading with the crystal ball, cards and so on. And um, I'm gonna deep dive a little bit in that information and um, talk about it in from different angles and um, yeah share a little bit of what I have found out during the years I have been doing uh, readings and working in the spiritual fields. So let's start then. Uh, we're first gonna talk about how a reading works. Um, uh, for myself, I do readings with the help of different tools. And there are many, many tools and that you can do readings from. Uh, we have uh, cards, crystal balls, pendulum, coffee. Uh, you can do readings in sand. And sand is one reading I'm going to do uh, in, in the future when I talk about Atlantis. So I will do a reading in sand, but that's a different uh, video. Um, and I, you can also use uh, bones and shells and rice and beans, all kinds of stuff, all depending on uh, from where in the world you are or what culture background there is. And well, tools are helpful, but doing a reading, you really don't need any tools. Uh, you can tune in to uh, whatever you want to get information about and uh, get information through that tuning in. And how that works, I'm going to soon explain. Um, I have a little list here, notes about readings. And first I'm going to uh, talk about uh, life and everything around us and everything we see, we feel, we touch, we um, connect with in somehow we experience is energy and it's tiniest, tiniest level everything is energy uh, plus charge and a minus charge and uh, Really, it's, everything is empty space when we have electrons and uh, protons all moving around. And on its tiniest, tiniest, tiniest particles, it's still energy. And it's emptiness, it's empty space. So really, we are empty space and nothing else. And everything is here and now. And so it is energy. And we as humans or living beings, Beings, not bees, being, beings. Uh, we are like uh, electro biomagnetic beings. Uh, our brain works through electric charges. We feel, we see, we we'll smell, we, everything we um, can. Um, what is the word? Perce perception, yeah. Um, that is through energy, through electric impulses in our brains. And reading works a little bit like that. We tune in. We are, humans are, even animals are, we are like living antennas. We can tune in to a certain frequency, a certain vibration and then receive information from that through our intuition or through what we see, we feel, we hear, we smell, we touch. And that is energy on its smallest level. And doing a reading is something like that. We try to tune in to a specific area, person, uh, time, or whatever it is we want to tune in uh, to find that information since everything has its own specific vibration and its own specific energy pattern so that we try to tune in 
And a lot of mediums, they when they tune in to that thing or person or whatever you want to read on, um, we can get the information back, as, as I said, as something we feel, we see, we hear, we taste, we smell. And sometimes it's symbolical, sometimes it's like a real movie, uh, and then you try to make a sense of of that information that comes <clears throat> and um, if you make a phone call for example we have modern uh, communication devices at the moment um, and there is no wire between one phone and, a, and another and still you can connect with the right uh, to the right energy pattern, frequency, to another person across the globe. And you can talk to that person, you can see that person, you can hear that person, you can even feel how that person feels sometimes. So how is that possible when there is no wire connection? A little bit, something similar happens also when you do a reading. You connect uh, through an energy pattern and you receive information. Mm -hmm. So at, it, at, it, as it, at its core, one really don't need any tools like crystal ball or cards. Uh, they are help, very helpful sometimes, but at its core you don't need them. Need them. It's enough to maybe hear a name or touch a person to tune in to that person's frequency and then receive messages uh, about that person's past, present and future. Um, but I'm still going to explain a little bit how this works with crystal ball and cards anyway for me. Uh, when I started with uh, crystal ball, I was many years ago, over 20 years ago. And this one is my first one I found in a esoteric shop and I, it was love on first sight. And it hopefully comes with me uh, for many, many more years. Uh, stones have their own frequency also. So um, crystal balls are you made of stone, of crystal. Many of them are quartz crystals and they have the ability to, I say, catch the energy, the information that is around us and then transform it and transmit it. So when I hold my hands on a crystal ball like this one, I try to focus on the question, on a person, on an event, uh, and it's like tuning in to that radio station uh, to see if I can hear, in this case, maybe see something around that radio station, you can call it. Um, and sometimes I can see pictures inside a crystal ball. But many times it's more like a picture inside your head. Like if you had a movie screen behind your eyes and some kind of movie is projecting pictures and, and trailers and something about a situation. And many times you don't get to see the whole movie, you just get to see like glimpse uh, of a movie. And maybe something symbolical. Uh, if you see a heart that many times means love, if you see a heart in two pieces, could be heartache, broken heart, divorce. So many times symbol says, says more than words. And that one have to also through, through the years you learn uh, which symbol means what for you. And since this, these crystal balls are made of different kind of materials, they have a different kind of vibrations. Uh, some of them are better to catch information on, on work and status and, and everyday lives, many times with like this amethyst ball. But amethysts are also good of catching uh, 
dreams of future, hopes, and uh, and wishes that the person have has. Then we have uh, the rose quartz. It's very mild, very uh, pleasant stone, and that talks many times about heart issues, romance, love, and things like that. The green stone or purple, this is fluorite and that is for balance, for balancing up issues, even for health. When, when we are not healthy, then we have an unbalance on some area and um, this stone helps that. And could also talk about find maybe where the problem is. And for example, this is obsidian. This is not a stone. This is vulcanized glass uh, this is, we can call it this material creates when uh, lava comes down from a volcano and touches sand and the sand melts into lumps of glass and that is obsidian and that helps uh, I say draw out negative energy blockages and um, clears up and protects from further invasions of some negative energy. So crystal balls, uh, as I said, they catch the tuning uh, to a certain question person or area. And when you look in it, you can see uh, pictures, symbols. Sometimes that picture or symbol uh, provokes another reaction in your body uh, like something you hear smell taste or feel so whatever impulse whatever you information you feel in your body or you see uh, it's good to take note because it could uh, be of importance and you learn also in in time uh, what to, no you learn also in time uh, if you can say what you see or not. Sometimes uh, you feel, oh, this I cannot say because maybe it's not right. Uh, you, and uh, the person in front of you are maybe hiding a lot of stuff. Maybe you don't know everything about that person, but something comes in the ball and that reveals and could be good to maybe say it all depends on the situation and who you are sitting with. And as I said, uh, you can uh, use a lot of things for reading. And this was, for example, the crystal balls. And I also clean the crystal balls with a special solution I have here. I have mixed a lot of different kind of etheric essential oils uh, to get an alcohol. And those are very cleansing in itself. And I always clean a crystal ball before I use and after to like um, reset it to uh, a fabric uh, yeah, settings so it will not be interfered uh, with some kind of energy pattern left from another question or another person. Um, crystal balls, yeah, I love them a lot and I I keep using them and I will keep using them and they um, are very helpful and um, they help you to how can I say, develop your intuition more uh, so you can see more feel more and in the spiritual field or different dimension the time is not as we perceive it uh, so sometimes it's very difficult to see time even in a crystal ball sometimes you see uh, an event and then I have to look around to see if it's spring summer winter uh, time could be difficult but always when a vision is very strong almost like I'm touching it or I have all the five senses reacting at once with a vision, then many times it's very, very likely 
almost 100% likely that this kind of situation will happen because it feels so real as it was already there. And about the cards then, I have uh, here oracle cards. Oracle cards are pictures, symbols. The same goes for tarot cards. Uh, tarot cards have been used for many hundreds of years and they have developed a lot. Now you can find hundreds and hundreds of different texts. And we have uh, the Major Arcana. Those are the cards like the Star, the Sun, the Devil, the Hangman. Uh, and then we have the Minor Arcana. And there are the Swords, the Wands, the um, Cups and the Coins. And all of them, you can call them, they are like small parts of of one's life. Uh, many of us at some point in life experience one of them. And the cards, there are many books about cards, there are many, uh, I say, almost scientific lectures how to read a card. I don't follow anything that said, says you must do it in a specific way. And I find that very uh, narrow because we all have to develop and develop our own intuition, our own way to see things. Some of the cards are, yeah, they have their specific meanings. Uh, but even if I sometimes get a card with a specific meaning, according to the books, a literal meaning, this card in combination with the question or with some other cards around could have a total different meaning and it could provoke a vision or it could provoke something else that the card is originally meant to signify and then one has to learn okay if i see this this time uh, what does it really mean so one have not to be afraid to maybe change as a meaning of a specific card. And I do that often. And uh, I have comments that people say, oh, you should, uh, this doesn't mean that, this doesn't mean that. No, maybe it doesn't mean for you, but that combination for cards provoke something else and give me a total different meaning for that question. So I have to be open that things can have different meanings than what it says in the books. Uh, and that is the uh, good thing about special tarot cards. You can invite your, uh, in, not invite, invent, invent your own different kind of spreads. For example, if this is the future here and this is the past here and whatever, you can invent them. Do your own spreads, but continue to put the cards and then the cards will adapt and show you the future here, the past here, or whatever issue. And I do it that way. I try to invent my own things and my own ways to inter interpret it, interpret, interpret the cards, sorry. <laughs> my English is not perfect, but I do my best. Uh, so yeah, the cards can have a different meanings uh, depending on how they lay, it's not always according to the books. And I have my own interpretation, interpretation of the cards. And so also goes for the um, oracle cards and gypsy cards. Uh, so one have to find your own safe space. Uh, if before I do a reading, also a reading here for a video or a personal reading for someone that visits me, I always do some kind of purifying a ritual before, protection ritual. So when you are open to other dimensions, to others, so it don't get interfered uh, with entities that want to make problem for you or for the person you are, uh, you who are visiting you. I find it quite helpful and um, yeah.
many times it's good to do it. You don't have to, but it, it could be good. And as I said, I many times don't use tools. Uh, sometimes it's just enough to touch a person or think about something and then the information comes. But it's good to be in some kind of meditative state, calm state. Uh, as I said, before one do a reading, you have some kind of meditation, purification, so you cleanse your mind from uh, from things that can be disturbing. And then it's easier um, to um, yeah, find that that thing, so that information you want uh, to pick up. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, the symbols we have been talking about. And um, every person is unique. Every person has its unique DNA, unique energy pattern. And when you tune in to that person, uh, then you tune in to that unique energy pattern. And every person or, or thing, you can also go, because everything, if you want to read where is this and where is that, have its own unique pattern also. Uh, then it's like there is no time, there is no space. Uh, you can be there right here and now if you're looking for something or if you're looking for some person's future or past. Um, the past is already there. Uh, the future is coming. And the future many times are a probable outcome uh, for one's action and the energies in the past in the, and the present. So that's a probable outcome. Nothing is 100% sure, even in, in doing readings. The only thing that is 100% sure for every one of us, that someday we're going to leave this earth life. That is 100% sure. But when? Maybe one should not know. So I don't really want to talk about death, even if it's as natural as being born. And that scares many of us. So about death, I really don't talk. Uh, because we don't really know when the time is. And it's better sometimes not to know either. Yeah. What do we have? Hmm. Yeah, okay. And life is not only here in this 3D dimensions. We have life forms on other dimension, other higher vibrating beings that we cannot see with it. our normal eyes and hear. Um, life comes in many forms and sometimes they also want to communicate with us and maybe they have an easier way to <coughs> sorry communicate when one is in a meditative state very relaxed state and we have mediums that go under hypnosis so medium hypnosis uh, to communicate uh, we can also communicate through dreams what they want to communicate to us through dreams through the the dreams, since dreams are also uh, when we are very relaxed, we are not aware, and then our soul, our energy has more free spectrum to receive messages of what is around. And I'm sure many, many of us have had some kinds of dreams that came true, well, could be dreams of warnings or dreams of good things happen. So it's like the the energy, the outcome is already there and we can intuitively uh, catch it or receive it through uh, our dreams or maybe crystal ball or cards. And when I, for example, try to communicate with other entities, many times I use my pendulums. I have uh, many different kinds here. Um, when I 
call upon them, the pendulum starts to move and it, you get like in a half trance state. Uh, and then it's easier to receive some kind of message. Yeah. As I said, it's not always, you don't always need the tools, even if it's more helpful sometimes. It's more fun maybe also if you sit with a person, you pick a card, they're lovely pictures, you can hold a crystal ball. It gives a, a nicer atmosphere. But as I said, all the information about everything in the universe is already there. So if you know how to tune in, you can download it. And this is just a help. You can tune in with almost anything. I can give you an example. I was on a party once and there was a, a person there who, oh no, are you looking in cars? Yeah, 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 can you look at me? I don't have my cars, but what do you see? What do you see? Okay, so I asked him to bite in a piece of bread and give it to me. I'm gonna do a reading in this piece of bread with the bite mark. So this person took a bite in the bun and gave me the bread with the bite mark. And now this piece of bread had uh, his energy pattern in it, some kind of energy. Then you, I hold the bread and I try to tune in. And then you, I saw uh, like scenes from the past, from the present and to the future. And he was very surprised that I pointed out uh, many of those things. So you can even read in a piece of bread that someone has bitten it. So it's, it's the same principle as in cards and, uh, and um, the, the crystal balls. Mm -hmm. And it's also about training and um, things doesn't come over a night. There are people that are very open and they have almost, you know, with no effort, they can see things and feel things. But for most of us, it's training. One ha there are different kind of exercise one can do to train up the intuition, the third eye to see and perceive. Uh, information that could be quite fun and uh, training training and read books about it from different kind of authors I don't I would not like to just get stuck on one or author uh, on the spiritual fields and um, buy books from many different from different epochs maybe and make your own sense out of it uh, n no one is completely right and no one is completely wrong. They are their views, how they found out this spirituality and reading works. And then you have to find out your own. Uh, especially in the comment sector, I have seen a lot of comments. Oh, the, you you saw wrong, you saw this, this, this and that. Yeah. For you, maybe it's wrong, but for me, it's right because I do it my way. I see things my way. So nobody can really tell you what you feel and what you see. So I am not always literally keeping to the book. I'm going many times outside and um, yeah, I say what I get for information. I don't say what people... I say, um, expect me to say or see. Sometimes it happens it will coincident, but many times it's not. So that's how my readings works. What's more? Yeah, uh, sometimes when I do videos here, if, if it's with crystal ball or cards or something, uh, I maybe have to cut in the middle of the video and take away a part. Uh, I do my videos here at my home, in my living room, uh, and I record them myself. I'm not living alone in my home. There are other people living here. 
and sometimes somebody could knock on the door, telephone could ring, anything could happen at home. Um, and I don't want to maybe make that disturbance in a video. So sometimes the videos are cut, maybe in the middle of a meaning or whatever. Uh, and then I try to continue with the reading. So sometimes you may find in a video that it's a little bit, yeah, you know, a hop or, yeah. Uh, and that is not uh, due to that something is wrong or interference from spirits. Many times something happens here at home and I have to cut out a minute or two, whatever, uh, not to um, make a, you know, a video with a lot of interference. And I cannot falsify my own visions. Sometimes people think I falsify uh, the visions and when a card is in a, in a video. But when I see something or there is some kind of disturbance and I continue with the reading, um, I say what I see. I don't really need the cards. They are just a tool. I don't need them. But it's more fun, I think, for you, more interesting for you, if you have also something to look at. Okay, you, she looks in the crystal ball or she uh, looks at the cards. The information will come no matter what. Okay. And uh, to falsify my own visions, I don't know how to do it. And then you, won't have, you have to tell me how to falsify my own visions. And um, now... I say what I see. So I don't really, would not need this. I could talk about visions just like that, but that would be maybe boring for you to watch someone who's talk, 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 and there is nothing else to uh, distract that talk with. Mm -hmm. um, so remember, everything is energy. And this is this energy that we try to read. And a lot of information about uh, that kind of energy in books, in literature, in yeah, all kinds of religions also. Uh, so there are a lot of to dive in and investigate further. And um, I don't know what more to say really uh, in this reading. I think we covered almost everything. How our reading with crystal ball works, how our reading with cards works. And as I said, the readings are, you know, they are symbols, the pictures are symbols. And symbols are universal. Many symbols signify the same in all languages. In sorry, in all countries, they have the same meaning. A child that is crying, for example, yeah, that means the child is sad. Uh, something hurts, maybe. Um, if you see a stop sign, well, it's a symbol still, but it means stop. Then we mean, oh, something to be aware of. So symbols can uh, also be received in crystal ball and cards. And they make up like a story. Uh, for example, if you have a card and you put a couple of cards, I I see them like a storybook without text. Mm -hmm. And then those pictures in combination to each other, um, they make up a story. And you will just have to find the words to that story. And sometimes it can be quite interesting story, especially if you take out some past lives, someone's past life. It can be like very, very interesting uh, novels. Yeah, it could be many, maybe best-selling books or good movies to make on, on those. But anyway, it, they create like a, a story and you try to make a sense out of it. So one never really knows what information comes. Um, I, the readings I do, I do it live. 
um, the only editing I do afterwards is to try to um, if I pronounce too much wrong words try to shorten that down or if some interference has come to cut that thing up but the readings I do are live and then it takes almost 10-12 uh, hours to make a, a video out of it with editing, music and other things and especially the text afterwards the English has to be editing with uh, big letter and dots and sentences and things like that and then we translate it to other languages so it's quite time consuming that was mainly what I have to say today about uh, readings and how I do readings with crystal ball and tarot cards. And if you would have any questions or anything you wonder about, please make a um, comment, write something in the comment sector and uh, hopefully I will be able to answer it. Yeah. And um, and I also want to um, say what could be important when you do a reading, especially with crystal ball and tarot cards, the atmosphere. Uh, it's very important to come to that some kind of meditative state, that calm state, where you can easier pick up the information. Uh, for example, incense, candle, the fire from the candles have a like primal force yeah, that helps you to come more into that state. And it could also be calming music in the background. It could be um, special, you know, colors around you. Yeah, so everything. Also around you helps a lot to to do a reading. Uh, well, that was a little bit about uh, readings. And should you have any questions uh, or you would like to comment something, your own experience, how you do a reading or what works for you, something you would like to share with others, please feel free to uh, write something in, in the comment sector. And to all of you wonderful, wonderful viewers, wish you all the best. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully we're going to see each other soon again. Bye-bye.